Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Lille, France. It's the Eurobasket 2015, the first semifinal, and it's Spain against France. And this atmosphere is as hot as it comes in international basketball. These two teams, tremendous rivals. Spain winning that opening tip, wearing the white and attacking the basket to your right on your screen. Gasol gets it inside, and they pass it out to Miritic. Long rebound out to Yule. He finds Paul Ribas. He passes up the shot over to Gasol just behind the line. And the veteran, the 35-year-old Gasol, puts Spain in front. He just goes on his tiptoes. A smooth shot there, Paul Gasol. Nando de Colo now over to Dio and Parker. Bounce pass to Dio. Rudy chasing Batum. And nobody boxes out. Gobert, and he just reaches up and puts it back in. And Paul Gasol just kind of gave up on that rebound. He did not want to pick up an early foul against Gobert. Rudy Fernandez. He misses. And that was rebound number two for Gobert. Parker goes baseline, and Yule cuts it off. Parker brings it back out to Dio. Dio gets in the lane, puts it up, and Gasol knocked it off the rim. It goes out of bounds, back over to France. But that was a great heads-up play there by Paul Gasol. The ball is alive. Look at it one more time. This is a shot by Dio. Paul goes up to knock it out of the rim, but then it's off Mirotic, so a chance for France. You see a lot of patience there offensively. The players are making an extra pass, really looking for for their teammates. Well, Gasol has just been exceptional carrying the Spanish team. It's going to be a huge ask to do it tonight, though. He needs a lot of support. Parker. Rudy scraps, and the ball ends up with Gasol. I think the key for Spain is to prevent second chance points. You have to take care of the boards. Miritich. And gets it back from Gasol, the little give and go. That's a smart play right there. Mirotic fakes out Gobert and then takes a pass back from Gasol. Parker gets it out, takes it out behind the arc now. He's going to have to put up a tough shot, possibly. Parker gets in on the baseline and Waited perhaps a little too late to get it going there, France, and Spain get it back. And look at the concentration there defensively by the Spain. This was the give and go between Gasol and Mirotic. They know each other so well from the club. They both play for the Chicago Bulls last season. And next season. Rivas over to Rudy. Rudy looks a little bit more active than he did against Greece. He steps back for a three. And Gobert. That's a second miss there for Rudy Fernandez, and he's holding his back a bit. Piccolo dazzles, gets it inside, puts it up and in. And that's a gutsy take right there by Decolo because he was going against number one shot blocker in the tournament, Pau Gasol. Mirdic from behind the arc. If he can hit it from downtown, it will be a huge help there for the Spaniards. Piccolo gets Ribas on him. Now he passes it over to Parker. Parker, Yule doing a good job defensively so far. Parker, though, dribbles away from him. Piccolo in the corner. Backs up Pau Ribas and puts it up. And Rudy Gobert gets the long rebound, passes it back out to Dio. Gobert's got some long arms. He can chase down a lot of rebounds. Now DiColo gets in the lane, puts it up and in. That was a scoop shot on the run. I thought he was actually looking at Gobert for the alley-oop dunk, but he laid it in. DiColo has been probably France's most consistent player in this tournament. Off to a good start. Now Pau Ribas gets in, explodes, passes back, and Gasol ends up with another three, and he was off to the left. So France doing a good job of uh, contesting shots. That's the number one defense in the tournament. 
Dio backs up Miritich, gets inside and puts it up off the glass and in. Good play by the French on that situation. Sergio Yu passes and a foul called Tony Parker. So Tony Parker picks up his first foul. In fact, that's the first foul of the game. He got kind of caught up on the screen on the recovery foul for Gasol. Powell rebounds, bounce pass to Gasol, gets it back to Powell. And oh, Pau Gasol was there just to clean up the mess. I thought it was an air ball there almost by Rebas, but Pau with his active hands and feet just stays involved in the play. Why do you follow it up? And he's been active at the rim on both sides of the court. He gets it back to a two-point deficit here for Spain. Good defense from Rudy on Batum. And look at defense of Yui on Parker. One on the shot clock, DiColo! Nando Di Colo. He's absolutely unconscious at the moment. Seven points to start the game off for Nando Di Colo. Coming off an awesome year was Cesca Mosco in the VTB United League and the, the Euro League. And he's showing everybody how good he is now at this competition. Gasol backs up Gobert. Batum on the run. Here he goes. Air Batum. So Spain do not want to give away any transition points. And Miritis drives in a foul before the shot. But this French team is fired up. And right now it's for Spain to stop the bleeding 13 to 6. Look at the replay right here. And Batum just taking off. Finishing his strong, just electrifies the crowd and his teammates. The bench is up. And Rudy tried to commit the foul to stop him. And Batum, knowing the foul was coming, was able to dance to his left. There ain't no stopping Batum on that play. Yule. Yule with a turnover. Now, DeColo. And that time, a foul by Pau Ribas. DeColo goes down, trying uh, perhaps to get an unsportsmanlike. He went down pretty hard. But maybe I, it was an unsportsmanlike. Well, but I didn't think there was intentional contact there. Well, timeout on the floor. You be the judge. Watch this. It was uh, some contact, but it wasn't called. 13 to 8, France on top of Spain. So 13 to 6. Well, coming out of the timeout by Spain, France uh, looking to turn the screw a little bit here. And Felipe Reyes has come into the game, obviously. That changes things a little bit for Spain. He's a real combative presence in that low post one time national team player and he's got so much experience and he's in his sixth year basket and, and look at Pau Gasol Miritich looking on from the bench but Pau Gasol has gone up to the uh, referee and said I've just been scratched and clawed on my arm he's trying to show him and also Dakota has a scratch perhaps from the uh from that, from that challenge from Riba, so he goes out of the game and Jalabal comes in. So maybe actually what Powell was saying was he had blood on him from De Colo. That's not oh. a bad guy to get out of the game if you're Spain. Absolutely. Now De Colo, the high score with seven points. Well, Jalabal has been playing very well for France. And he understands his role well. Dio goes up against Reyes. Oh, the pass into Gobert. Gobert is swatted. By Gasol, a little bit of payback from last year. Gasol out to Ribas for three. Go! It comes out. He almost counted that shot. It, it touched every part of the rim, was rolling there for a good three seconds. Just rolls out on Paul Ribas. It was rolling, rolling, rolling. But look, look at, at the that. block idea. How often do you see Rudy Gobert getting his shot blocked so close to the basket? And that's why the ball has been awarded to Spain. The referee ruling it went off of Dio. So Flo Pietrus comes into the game for Dio. I mean, you talk about some intensity that you're getting with Florian Pietrus. 
How many minutes will he play? Gasol, you have to wonder. Seven seconds on the shot clock as France uh, knocked the ball out of bounds. Victor Claver played big minutes. And he actually played good minutes. This was the look between Paul Gasol and Philippe Perez. And there's some discussion going on there right now at the table. But what a great minutes, as you said before, there for Victor Claver. And he played at the small forward position. That was the difference because before that in the tournament, he was playing at the power forward position. It did not suit him well. At small forward, he was great against in the semifinal game. Uh, quarterfinal, I'm sorry. Well, the ball goes out of bounds. So Claver comes in for Rudy Fernandez. Uh, Sergio Rodriguez as well is coming into the game for Yule. Felipe Reyes, tough jump shot. And Tony Parker catches it. Brings it up the floor and then falls over. And turns it over. So just kind of lost his footing there. I think just tripped or slipped. And what he's pointing for the floor to be wiped up. Look at it one more time on the replay. He just kind of crumbled. Yeah, just strange. There was not much contact between him and Sergio Rodriguez. But he gets a lift from the crowd and is cheering Tony, Tony. He's a crowd favorite at the moment, leading the French squad in points per game. Well, he really erupted the other night against Latvia. Oh, Gasol, quick move, goes up, strong, and Gobert can't stop him. And this is what you have to do against a shot blocker of the quality of Rudy Gobert. You have to spin into him. You have to draw contact and go hard up, go up hard. Parker gets inside, back out to Jalabal. Jalabal, the soft touch, puts it up and in. And this person game, this is his game right here. Just take it off the dribble. Medium range jumpers. We've seen it the whole tournament from Gilles Now Rodriguez just kind of coasts in and puts it up off the glass and in. You almost expect a challenge on that shot if you got Rudy Gobert on the floor. And then Parker fumbles it out of bounds. Two turnovers uncharacteristic for Tony Parker. But again, it's almost an unforced error. I mean, Rodriguez was kind of just playing off of him. Look at it. Rodriguez just waltzing in there for the easy lane. I don't believe that Gobert wasn't trying to go for the block. I mean, he almost always tries to challenge everything that comes his way. He goes to the bench and Lovern comes on. You all back into the game. Here's Rodriguez, passes it back outside to Claver. Is he gonna hit that? Yes, nope, stays out. Now Batum, midcourt to Jalabal. Great defense on, of Yui on Barker. Jump shot for Nicola Batum. And now Spain with a chance to run. And Gasol goes right down the lane and dunks it. And Laverne's got to be careful because Pau Gasol has been looking to run the fast break. And Pau's up to eight points. He's leading Spain. Laverne, having come into the game, has been very impressive. Now Tony Parker gets inside and the follow by Laverne. And that's a valuable contribution there by Lover. Paul Gasol was out of the play. He was challenging Parker on the drive. Lover picks up the garbage. Well, who's going to spell Gasol? He's in the game here late in the first quarter. Fournier getting ready to come in for France. No look pass. They get it to Gasol. Passes up the jumper. He puts it up and earns a trip to the free throw line. And I got a rhetorical question for you. Can Spain afford not to have Pau Gasol on the floor? Right now, it doesn't seem like a realistic scenario. This is the fast break. I mean, where is he getting the energy? He's blocking shots. He's playing the heaviest minutes on the team, leading the team in points, leading the tournament in points, and he's running the floor. Trying to think what their other options would be with Hernan Gomez, possibly, as a I, youngster. I think they would go with two smalls. They would go with Felipe Reyes and, and Mirotic. Yeah, Mirotic came in the other day and played minutes while Gasol was catching a couple of minutes on the bench. Uh, against Greece. There he has nine points. MVP of the uh, FIBA Basketball World Cup back in 2006. Gasol's been averaging almost 29 minutes a game. But I and think he's going to have to play more today. He comes off and it's 41 seconds there till the end of the first quarter. I expect that he's going to be off only for those 41 seconds. So Gasol comes out to catch a breather. 
Not a, not a huge size advantage at all really right now for France. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Spain in a zone. Fournier. That's what you do. Zone buster. And Fournier had a really tough quarterfinal. He actually had two air balls from a three-point distance, but he connects on the first shot. So Sergio Rodriguez will try to take it down here. The final seconds. And he's fouled by Flo Pietrus. I think Fournier is the type of a player that just really needs to hit his first shot. If you remember the eighth final, he was phenomenal because he hit the first shot against Latvia. He couldn't find his mark. Two air balls here. Very important first touch and a three-pointer made by Fournier. Well, Rodriguez right at the end of the quarter. Buries a three. And that gets it back to 20 to 17. France still on top. Uh, but it's just a three point lead at the end of the first quarter. Second quarter action underway. Nando De Colo back in the game for France. Sergio Yule on De Colo now. And De Colo whips it into the corner to Jalabal. He's already hit one short jump shot. Now he puts up one a little bit longer and Pietrus goes up and gets the weak side rebound. Nicolo tries to dump it to Lovern. He does, but Lovern can't convert it. Rodriguez. And Rodriguez gets it to Yule, and Yule steps out of bounds. And Rodriguez says, I was bumped as I went in. But you have to like the aggressiveness of Sergio Rodriguez, how he was attacking the French defense in the open court. Yep, that was a good call because Yule landed with his foot out of bounds. I think the play of Sergio Yu and Sergio Rodriguez at one and at the point guard, the off guard is going to be crucial for the Spaniards. No doubt about it. Mirdic trying to keep Lovern out of the lane. Lovern backs his way up and not soft enough. Clavier fouled as he gets to rebound. Did you see that post up situation? I mean, Lovern was taking it to Mirdic with some force. Those are some two big bodies going at it. Good position defense by Mirotic and a good rebound by Claver. Fouled by Jalabal from the back. They called it on Pietrus, I think. Former teammate of Claver at Valencia in Spain. So he comes out. Boris Dio back into the game for France. And Fournier commits the foul. So, you know, if you, if you hit the road, you play in hostile territory, you can expect at the very beginning of the game some real, you know, the crowd to be into it. But Spain have a chance, perhaps, now. They've kind of calmed things down. Bounce pass into Reyes, and Reyes was swatted but pushed. I thought Jalabal just held, held his hand when Felipe was getting the ball right here. You see, I mean, he's, he was slightly half a step too late to cover Felipe. It looked like he just pass. had his hands on him. That was the only thing. But for I a think split second. For Spain, it is so important that they, they are playing competitive basketball, even with Pau Gasol on the bench. A lucky roll there for Felipe Reyes. This is important to give him as much rest as possible. He's going to need to play some heavy minutes, extremely heavy minutes today. 35 years old, he was with Pau Gasol every year in this national team, going way back.
Clavier guarding Jalabal. Now Dio with eight on the shot clock. And he passes, and the turnover, and now Spain, Yule in the open floor, and good defense from Fournier. And now a foul on Sergio Rodriguez, and instead of uh, shots, and Decolo looks and says, that foul was a little bit too hard. Shouldn't that be a, a sportsmanlike? Well, I think what the discussion is also Whether that he was, that shooting. He was shooting. Yeah, because yeah. look at the block right here by Fournier. That's a great movement of his feet. Yule's got just nowhere to go. Now, this is a smart play by Decolo. He knows the foul is coming, so he tries to shoot the three-pointer. It could have been called a shooting foul. It could have been called an unsportsmanlike, really. Two-three zone. And, or they, no, actually, they're in the man. Anyway, Meredith switches on to Jalabal, and Jalabal is just such good form shooting the ball. But he's being just effective and very calm with his offense. He's not pushing anything. Well, fancy pass from Rodriguez. Yule from the corner. It's good. Three-pointer. That's a great ball movement right there by the Spanish team. From the weak side to the strong side. Skip pass. Tocolo keeps the pressure on. Now to Fournier. Rodriguez moves his feet quickly. Fournier looking for a way to get in. The ball just gets ping-ponged or pinballed over to Jalabal. He couldn't quite get it. Now, 14 seconds will be put on the shot clock for France. Spain couldn't quite corral that. So good job defensively here. And Jalabal, it looked like he had it, but it was just near to put him off his shot just a little. I mean, the effort by the Spanish team is there on defense. I mean, if you had any question about your defense. So coming out of the French timeout, Decolo hands it off to Lovern, and Lovern puts it up and in. And that's a strong finish by Jeffrey Lorraine. He has to do that because he's got some big bodies around him. He's going to go up strong with the finish. Lovern's really uh, progressively gotten better and better in this tournament. Here it is, takes a look and has the shot blocked. And the ball's going to go. Oh, they're saying the ball's going back over to France. I thought he was blocked. He just missed it. He shot an air ball. Here we go. Look again. That's a good defense. That's a great defense by Dio. He just puts his hand up, doesn't touch Miritich at all. Nope, I don't think so. 38% three pointers for. Uh, Spain, 22% today so far. Miritich gets a hand in the face of Jalabal, but it doesn't matter. And he's been the X factor early on there for France, scoring seven points early. Well, really, he's been, he, other than Decolo, you know, certainly coming off the bench, Jalabal has been a reliable scorer. Now, Yule takes it out to Claver. That's online. Nope. Lovern, and the ball goes out over to France. And the three-pointers are just not happening there for the Spanish team. Now you're going to have a substitution. Claver missed two open three-pointers, so Rudy Fernandez is coming back into the game, and so is Pau Gasol. That was the last three-pointer there by Gillabao. I mean, he's been just deadly effective. He goes to the bench, but what a spark he has provided to his team. Some great quality minutes for Gillabao. And Sergio Rodriguez intercepts the pass, pushes it quickly, goes behind his back, and fouled by Fournier. Almost kind of got bailed out by that because he'd already left his feet with nowhere to pass it. That's what I was going to say. I mean, he had nobody ahead of him. Look at him one more time on the replay. Now he turns. He doesn't see anybody, but thankfully for him, he is fouled by Fournier. Rodriguez quickly to Pau Gasol, and Pau puts it up, tries to head it in, and he has free throws immediately coming off the bench. What a great footwork. He receives it under the basket. He's got Dio and Loren right around him. Wow. But so that fouls on Fournier, so three quick ones for him. He goes to the bench. So some fouls starting to build up here for the French team, and, yeah, he definitely got him. 
But I still think that, you know, he had a very rough night there against Latvia. I think it's, it's better. I know he's got three fouls for you, but he still gave you a lot more than he did against Latvia when he was looking very, very tentative. That's a rare miss here for Paul Gasol. He's a great free throw shooter. Look at his shooting percentage, four for four from two. So he makes one of two and cuts the deficit to four. Tony Parker back in along with uh, Batum for France. Now Dio puts up a little uh, runner in the lane there. Gets it back. He was short. And puts up a fadeaway. And Miritic collects it. But the story on the rebounds is all France, 16 to 9. Yule explodes to the basket. And he was contested. He wants a foul, nothing called. But I don't know if you would agree with me, but I like the way that Sergio Rodriguez and Sergio you are playing. They are being aggressive. They are not afraid to make a mistake. Look at it one more time. That's a hard drive. That's a challenge there to Decolo. And you have to like that. You cannot just rely on Pau Gasol to do everything. I'm, I'm, I'm glad the, the referees seem to be letting him play. Bounce pass. Miritich to Rodriguez. So he makes the back cut, backdoor cut, and gets it back to two. Perfect execution. Great spacing out there by the Spaniard team. Parker. Puts up, mid-range, good! Finally he gets one to drop, Tony Parker from mid-range. That was an individual one-on-one -on -one situation. He just created a shot for himself. He was the MVP of the Eurobasket two years ago. Rodriguez absorbs the contact. Now, quickly, Decolo. And tries to avoid the contact from Miritich. Miritich commits the foul at mid-court. I actually thought that almost Mirotic was trying to avoid the contact as well. It's only first foul there on Mirotic. Here it is again. Look at this. Well, he kind of uh, reached in a little bit with his left hand. It was like he wanted to, to do the foul, but then just kind of decided last moment to try to avoid the contact. So that's Mirotic's first. No foul trouble to speak of for Spain at this point. Four minutes remaining in the opening half. Nicolo. Miritich puts it on the deck, gets inside, and Rudy's. <laughs> Rudy Gobert swats it. Not in my house, baby. That's Rudy Gobert. I mean, he was with his head to the rim. I I'd don't like believe to see that, that again. Box. I thought it might be going down. Watch this. No, it's there. Nope. It's on the way up. It was culminating. <laughs> it reaches plateau. Uh, great play from Rudy Gobert. Now Rudy, or excuse me, Rodriguez. Tough shot for him. That's off to the right. And Gasol hits it only as far as Parker. Rudy's Gobert's uh, return igniting the French. And Pau Gasol tried to swat it before it went in. And France go back in front by six. And right now it's looking that Tony Parker is getting his confidence. He hit four shots in succession against Latvia. Let's see if he can do that again today against Spain. Gasol backs up Gobert. Puts it up and in. And it's like you said, he's not avoiding him. He's going right at him. That's what you have to do. You have to attack the shot blocker. Nobody came to double and help Rudy Gobert. Parker, dancing around, puts up the little short one. Now Gasol with the rebound, and gets it to Rodriguez, who brings it back to the middle of the floor. Passes back to Rudy Fernandez, and now it's Mirdic. And Rudy Fernandez being booed here. Goes to his right and fouled by Nicola Batum. You see right there, when he took a step back and took the shot, I don't think his shot is there, but still, you know, provoking the contact. Look at the block one more time. It is just beautiful. How high is Rudy Gobert? 
on that block. He's such an athlete, such long arms. Tremendous, tremendous play, and that's the reputation. He came into this second to Pau Gasol in blocks in the competition. So Rodriguez played well. He goes to the bench for Spain. And Miritic also goes to the bench. Pau Ribas and Felipe Reyes back in. I thought Rodriguez, Rodriguez played pretty well. Yeah, he was aggressive. It, that's, a, that, that's a good news there for Sergio Scariola. He has not been able to, to produce the kind of intensity in the previous games. Parker to DiColo. And ball batted away. Now quickly up to Yule. Can he get it? Yes, he does. All the way over to Rudy Fernandez. Sets his feet, puts it up. It's good! Three-pointer in Spain have taken the lead! The quarterfinals, and this is something that all of these players and an entire Spanish basketball nation has had to live with. And this is the type of thing, this is the tonic to get over that hangover if they can beat France on their own floor. Now, Dio in the lane. Back out to Parker, good defense. And a steal, another turnover. And Scariolo is doing a good job of managing this game for Spain. Yule floats, misses, DiColo on the run. Here he goes, up to Batum. And the block from Rudy, another block from Felipe Reyes, and Yule gets it back. Look at the defense from Spain. Quickly to Gasol, and he had to check himself. Dio, great defense from Boris Dio. Gasol <laughs> looks over and picks up the foul. But how about intensity in the game right now? I mean, we've seen some unbelievable sequences on both ends of the floor. Look at Gasol going for the rebound after his miss, and he is not happy, Kemper. No question that was a foul. Pau Gasol, though, fouling Rudy Gobert coming over the back. Look at his stare. <laughs> well, you don't give up your entire summer to play for the national team and not come and play with intensity. Uh, in a game like this with a spot in the Olympics at stake. DiColo from the left. And mistiming his jump was Gasol. And then the reach and the foul by Rudy Fernandez. So Rudy Gobert goes to the line. Here it is again. That was a wide open look there for DiColo. He scored the first seven points, uh, early seven points for France. But just oh, oh it, now it, they're not going to award free throws, saying that he fouled him before he went up. But he did bring the ball down. That could be a very good call by the referees. He, he was not in shooting motion. That's a cardinal mistake if you're a big man. Rudy Gobert is so tall, he should have kept well, it Well, he up. gets it here. He puts it up, and he gets it to go in. That's the answer right there. Rudy Gobert just coming back immediately. Final minute of a riveting. First half here between Spain and France in Lille. Rudy puts up another three off the rim. Now Jalabal has it in the middle of the court, and he's going to hold it for one shot. France with a one-point lead, trying to build on that. And Ale Le Bleu, the chance in this crowd, by this crowd here in this arena. Five on the game clock. Tony Parker goes to work, puts up a three, and that was short. And Reyes' attempt is blocked. So France lead it 33-32 over Spain in the first semifinal of Eurobasket 2015. Second half action underway here in Lille, France. It's the Eurobasket semifinal between Spain and white and France and the blue. And Pau Ribas comes out immediately. And the new Barcelona signing who spent the last two years at Valencia is off target. Rudy Gobert is up to eight rebounds in the game. 
in only 13 minutes. Well, everybody expected a, a rather heated, tense affair, and so it has proved to be. Decolo gets inside, couldn't quite beat Gasol to it, but France get it back in a new 14. Now Batum drills it. And I was just going to call for some offensive production from Batum, and he starts the second half by drilling a three-pointer. Good entry by him. Well, Nikola Batum had that sensational dunk. Now the bounce pass to Miritich. He fumbles the ball. He loses it. Goes off, I think, Gobert. I actually thought also Miritich when he saw Gobert. This is a three-pointer. A quick one by Nikola Batum. The Miritich got kind of intimidated there by, by the presence of the skyscraper. Now Miritich gets it. Batum was right up on him, too, on the shot clock. Gasol rushes one up, and it's a tough start here to the second half for Spain. And Spain's going to have to calm down and execute better. They are now getting good looks at the basket. Not a great shot selection in the first two possessions. Batum for three, and this was short. Decolo with the rebound, and back out to Tony Parker. Rebounding is really hurting Spain, 27 to 15 in favor of France. Parker comes out, then goes back in, then creates a little space. And with short, Decolo challenges the rebound. Thinks it goes off of a Spain player, but his uh, pleas fall on deaf ears. Here it is again. Look at this. Rudy Fernandez. Gasol couldn't quite get it away from Gobert. Now Decolo up ahead, and Rudy Fernandez chases back to prevent the pass to Nicola Batum, and then France commit a foul. And he kind of stretched out. I mean, he really had to sprint back and leap to get that steal. Yeah, and you're he's, wondering if he's hurt himself. Yeah, he's holding his back. You know he's not 100%. There's no way. I mean, he's playing with, with some pain today, but he's a competitor. Well, he doesn't miss when it comes to playing for Spain. He's played for this national team every year, going back to 2004, the Olympics in Athens. Rudy. Hits inside, puts up a tough shot, maybe trying to do a little too much there. Ball goes out of bounds off Batum. He was looking at Paul Gasol. He was just standing. I, I couldn't see you. He was not, he couldn't just make the drop pass to the back. Look at one more time. Paul is behind him, but he doesn't see him. And that's a tough shot over Gobert. Meredith from the corner. Good! And Dio just turns his head and loses track for a split second of Mirotic who nails it. One for four, Nikola Mirotic from beyond the arc. Sergio Yule on Parker. Mirotic switches on Parker and then fouls Parker. So two fouls on Nikola Mirotic. No, nobody uh, for Spain really in foul trouble. And in fact, Mirotic is the only player with two fouls. This was his three. And he's a great shooter. I mean, he's moved so well without a ball that he just kind of slid in the corner and Dio just lost track. Parker uses the pick by Gobert, gets in the lane, and two shots will be called, to a uh, foul rather, so two shots for Parker. Spain saying it was before the shot. Let's Watch look this. At Absolutely, absolutely. The foul is before the shot. But the Ukrainian referee says otherwise. So Tony Parker, I mean, this could be good for him. You know, he hasn't really got it going yet. He gets a, ch a chance at the line. Paul Ribas there after a couple of uh, very impressive seasons. Now, Scariolo has just been uh, warned by Christos Christodoulou, uh, the Greek referee, that that's enough. He doesn't want to hear any more barking. So Scariolo says, okay, five points, two rebounds, three assists for Parker so far. And Parker makes just one of two. The tension is palpable. Miritich gets in the lane. And now his pass intercepted by Batum. And Yule gets in there, and this time two shots for Nikola Batum. Yule was trying to sprint back and really get in front of Batum. 
But Ren Batum with his long legs, look at the steal right here. That was an easy pick off, picked off pass from Mirotic. And it's almost impossible to do anything but foul. Well, Batum is uh, a little short, but bounces over the rim. Now, they didn't have many free throws in the first half. This is only a third free throw actually taken by, by the French team. So they had no free throws in the first half. And already getting to the line a couple of times here. Good start to the second half for Nicola Batum. And where he's good, he's, he's very good on both ends of the floor, especially defensively. Gasol gets in the lane, puts up a high arcing shot, and Rudy Gobert went up to try to knock it off the rim, but it just took a high bounce off the rim and came down. Look at Pau Gasol. Why did you see the high arch on that shot to get it over Gobert? So back to a two-point game. Gasol with 15 points. Now Parker goes right at Gasol, puts it up quickly, and Gobert gets it back. And Gasol with the rebound. That was a strong challenge by Pau Gasol. He took a chance on the foul. And oh, what a play from Sergio Yule. Just uses all of his strength and explodes to the basket. And he's got a lot of strength in those legs. Parker, short jump shot. And Decolo with the rebound. Things are not really falling there for Tony Parker. Here's Batum, and another rebound for Gasol. Six rebounds to go with his 15 points. Now, Pau Ribas in Spain with a chance to go on top. Miritich gets in the lane, puts it up, and good defense from Dio. That's quick hands there of Boris Dio. You know he's got one of the craftiest hands for any big man in the post as far as passing, but here you see it also on a defensive situation. I mean, he just slaps in. And knocks the ball that's out a, of the hands of Miritich. That's a good no call. But he does have some crafty hands, huh? Very crafty indeed. DiColo, Dio has the shot hit, or the pass uh, batted away, but then Miritich can't control it to get it back to Gobert. He goes right at Gasol. Gasol stands there like a tower of power, and the ball goes back over to Spain. This is just a phenomenal game. Go one side and the other. Rudy Gobert challenged by Pau Gasol. How about Pau Gasol? He's been huge there for Spain. And the ball went off of Gobert's uh, right foot. Yule. Gasol's pass intercepted by Batum. And his pass up to DiColo, and he puts it up and in. And again, Pau Gasol tries to go for the block. Offensive foul called against, is it Mirdich? So that is three fouls now, Mirdich, and he may have to take a seat. Rudy Fernandez tells him to have a seat. He doesn't want him to pick up anything. Rodriguez is coming in. So Pau Ribas and Mirdich go to the bench, Felipe Reyes. And Sergio Rodriguez come in, but Batum has been fantastic on the defensive end tonight. This is what you call it. I mean, he does not have to score points there for France, but he can provide so much for the team with his long arm athleticism defensively. He's got seven points, five rebounds, and two steals. Batum, and here he is. Misses the shot, but Gobert challenges for the rebound. And then Yule challenges, but Jalabal comes up with the ball. Now Parker for three, good! Tony Parker! And things are really heating up for France, and Sergio Scario is gonna have to take a timeout to just calm things down for Spain, because right now they are down five points. This terrific uh, football stadium converted here into the basketball court for this competition. Rodriguez pass over to Felipe Reyes, and Reyes misses. That's a difficult shot for Felipe Perez to take. He's been on the bench for a long time. Felipe Perez was MVP in Spain this past season with Real Madrid, number nine. Kind of had a, a year of revival. Claver back into the game now, guarding Rudy Gobert. 
Two on the shot clock. Gobert gets inside, but he's pushed, and the foul called on Spain. If you ask me, he's bailed out right now by Claver because there are only two seconds left on the shot clock, and Sergio Oscario is not happy with the play of Claver. Look at it right here. There's, he's not going anywhere, really. I mean, he was going to the middle. I had to shoot, shoot a tough, tough jump hook there with his left. You don't, you don't use the foul right now. And already, uh, this French team in the bonus The chance of Rudy, Rudy. Well, we got a couple of Rudys here in this game tonight. Rudy Fernandez and Rudy Gobert. I got a feeling that they, they were not cheering for Rudy Fernandez. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's another cheer they've got for him. I'm not a betting man, but I think that was a safe bet. And it rhymes with ooh. It's a boo. And Gobert now takes it up to seven points. And the biggest lead of the game for France uh, thus far has been seven points. So this is a difficult time here. Now, foul on Batum, his second. Pressuring the inbounds throw. Now Gasol goes to work. And fouled by Rudy Gobert. Look at the quickness of Paul Gasol in the post on a one-on-one -on -one situation against Gobert. He just spins so fast. He's so low on the spin. Look at it. He freezes him. Then goes to the to the baseline. It's fouled by Gobert. And that's only the first foul on Gobert. And now the French are singing their national anthem. Gasol again gets in the lane. And fouled again by Rudy Gobert. So you can see Pau Casal taking responsibility with uh, Spain's, I won't say their backs are against the wall, but this is a, a difficult time. And Rudy Gobert has collected already 11 rebounds. Lovain, Geoffrey Lovain is going to come in, move to Denver this past season. And Rudy Gobert comes out, the Utah Jazz center. He's got five offensive rebounds, Rudy Gobert. So that's a big, a big absentee, but Lovern's played very well at this Eurobasket. And Gasol misses the first one. That's actually a second miss there for Pau from the free throw. He's three for five at the moment. It has Those to be numbers. That has to be a fatigue. Takes his time and makes the second. Theo gets it to Batum. Now he goes to work on Yule. Back outside the Jalabal who's been shooting it really nicely. Oh, from the corner and it's Geoffrey Lovern. That was a two. That is such a difficult shot because he just checked into the game. Sitting, yeah. on, sitting on the bench for a good seven minutes. I'll tell you, his stock has gone up immeasurably. I mean, it's on the way up. Geoffrey Lovain, remember this name. Already in the NBA. Now, Gasol drives in. Tough shot. Oh, good, aggressive uh, crashing the boards there by Victor Claver and Spain get it back. And then Yule drives in, misses the layup. Oh, that was a sloppy shot by Yule. He had a wide open look at the basket on the drive. Nobody challenged him. Lovern for three, banks oh, it in! Oh, the bank is open for Geoffrey Lovern! Five quick points for Geoffrey Lovern coming into the game. And then he's called for a foul. Battling with Pau Gasol. So Pau Gasol goes to the line, and this is not a bad situation, but look at the bank. <laughs> Did he call that? Well, when it's going right, it's going right. And right now, it's going right for France. That's the, actually was the biggest lead of the game, 11 there for France. He's got to look at the, the Spain bench, looking on nervously. 17 points for Gasol, five of seven at the free throw line.
So that gets it back to nine. That's a zone defense there by Spain. Spain. That's it. France shooting 55% from three-point range. Now Dio and Claver chases it down. Yule in the open floor and puts it up and misses the shot. And Claver there for the follow, misses. Claver again, this time lays it up over. And this is aggressiveness of the Spanish players, Felipe Reyes and Victor Claver. Just stay with it, stay in the play. Lovern telling the uh, the guys to mop up the moisture from the floor. Had some bodies fall, including Tony Parker. Now Parker finds his way in the lane, takes a tough jumper. And the ball lands to Parker. Incredible. He was on his backside. It bounced over the Spanish players. Jello ball wide open. Good. He nails on another three-pointer. Three-pointer number two for Jello ball in the game today. I'll tell you what, George. He is playing his finest Eurobasket, I've decided. He has been so consistent. Such a spark. Gasol turns, draws the foul on Lovern. And what you have to like about Gilabal, that he is not pushing it at all. This is num foul number three for Jovan. Look at it right here. This what's, was an odd situation. He catches it, Tony Parker. Oh, so uh, Spain did get a, get a tap on that. And that's a three-pointer by Gilabal. Ten. Ten points yeah, he's got for two, Ball. He's got two three-pointers, and he started with the two turnaround jumpers in the paint. Remember, I mean, he's leading the team in scoring. Ball. And he's actually first one to double figures. Shooting four for six from the field. Well, you never know who's going to step up. But as I said, Ball has been very good from Montpellier all the way here to Lille. And Gasol back at the line has a game high 19 points now after that free throw. Seven of nine. Spain just trying to uh, close the gap here at the end of the quarter. Paul Gasol is getting close to his average of 23 and a half points right now up to 20. Lovern, so he gives it back to Parker. Dio at the line into Lovern spins, puts it up, and traveling. He did travel before he put the ball on the floor. He just kind of like jumped in the air. Look at it one more time. He catches it. Look at it. That's a clear violation in Europe. Maybe in the NBA, no, but here, that's an easy call for the referees to make. Tony Parker takes the seat. So maybe a, an opportunity here for Spain. They're down eight. Rodriguez. And now Batum commits a foul. Oh, no, Dio, excuse me, his second foul. And this is not what you want to do because there's 22 and a half seconds left in the third quarter, and he's sending Paul Gasol to the line. Well, it could end up helping them, though, because they're going to have now possession yeah, but I mean, Paolo is a very good free throw shooter. I mean, he missed a couple today. But I think right now the, the energy and the momentum was on, on the defensive side there for France. So that gets it back to seven. And Paolo Gasol, you, you know that he's going to come and play big in this game. Just like he did in the last game against Greece. Just as he did in the game before that against Poland when he carried Spain on his back. Now he comes out. Uh, to take a seat here, final 22.5 seconds of the third quarter. Jared back in with the three fouls. And Batum struggles to get it in, but he does get it in just in time to Decolo. So two rivals, Rodriguez and Decolo. Decolo goes to work, six on the shot, or er, game clock. Five, Decolo makes the pass to Laverne. What a play at the end of the quarter. That's a beautiful catch there by Laverne in midair. He doesn't come down and immediately finishes it off the alley -oop. What a great way to finish the third quarter there for the French. Another look. Well, you can't do it any better than that. Decolo, the provider, and Laverne with the finish.
Eight point advantage for France with 10 minutes remaining. The final quarter underway here at the Eurobasket. France leading Spain 56-48. It's the semifinal, the winner to the final. The winner clinches a spot in the Rio de Janeiro games. This time, Jalabal off target, and Rodriguez gets the long rebound, and Tecolo commits the foul before Rodriguez could uh, attack the basket. Spain started in zone defensively, paid off for them with their first possession, and Paul Gasol is resting right now on the bench. It's question how long he can stay there here for Sergio Scarillo, the Spanish coach. Rodriguez explodes again, puts up a little runner and makes it. What a tough shot there by Rodriguez over Laverne. Well, the pass into the corner to Jalabal now, Batum, and he misses the three, and Miritich chases it down well. Spain with looking a little promising here with Gasol on the bench, making some inroads. And Rodriguez again, maybe some penetration from him. Goes to the right of Jalabal. And a tough shot, though, from Miritich. And Claver couldn't get the rebound. And this is the defense that you know from France. They are allowing only 65.4 points per game to the opponents, number one in the tournament. The best defensive team in the whole Eurobasket 2015. That was the shot that went in for Rodriguez. So Rudy Gobert back into the game. Evan Fournier with the three fouls. He's back in. Lovain stays in. Jalabal and Decolo. Now the pass to Lovain. Kind of uh, didn't get it immediately. Back out. Decolo pulls up just inside the free throw line. And a difficult shot because he had his defender right on his side. Play was Rodriguez just really guarding him closely. Now Miritich puts the ball on the deck, hands it off to Reyes. Reyes couldn't hold it, and then Claver knocks it away. Oh, a little razzle-dazzle from Nicolo. And Fournier gets inside, and the battle for the ball, it's getting scrappy. A little helter-skelter. No-look pass, and Miritich puts it up off the glass. That's a four-point swing. And two easy points there for Spain. I thought that Fournier could have dropped it off to Lovern, who was right there open under the basket. Lovern goes at Pau Ribas. Foul on Pau Ribas. Says, what else can I do? But the zone is, I would say, has been pretty successful there for Spain. Here you see the quick two points for Nikola Mirotic on the fast break. And the no-look pass from Rodriguez. Gasol still getting uh, a breather. On the bench. Now, the reach, the steal, and the foul by Jalabal. And this, uh, this unit is doing a good job for Spain. Absolutely, very active there defensively. Just staying close, putting some pressure on the ball, but doing a hell of a job also on the picks, off the ball, and on the ball. Here you see the foul to stop the fast break by Jalabal. Oh, Fournier goes out, Tony Parker back in. You know, for Spain, there's no Ricky Rubio this year, no Juan Carlos Navarro, no Marc Gasol, no Jose Calderon, but here they are, giving, giving France a tough game. Uh, 
And Parker, another foul. So Tony Parker now has three fouls. So there's uh, some foul accumulation here for this French team. Laverne goes out. He has three fouls. Good minutes from him. But I think that Vincent Collet is just tightening up his rotation. Now with Parker and Dio back in the lineup. Rudy working against Jalabal and tries to go and hands it off to Reyes. And Reyes travels. He had a problem to catch the ball on the pass by Rudy. The pass wasn't bad. He just, Rudy just dropped it off, but Reyes couldn't handle it. Look at him one more time right here. That was Nicolò actually getting there in the mix. Nicolò has been fighting like a cat defensively. A possible MVP candidate of this competition, Nicolò. Not out of the realm of possibilities. Here he is, puts up a three, good! Nando Nicolo right on cue. I thought that Felipe Reyes was right on him. He stopped the penetration. Wow, what a shot. 14 points, Nando Nicolo. And now a foul called on Boris Deal, and that is three on him. Just kind of steps back, pops the three. Look Here at the penetration. Again. He's right there, Felipe. Recovers. But Decolo somehow gets it off over him. This French team right now looking like they're not going to be denied. And Jalabal gets a huge applause as he comes out of the game. Gasol back in for, for Spain. Also, Rudy Gobert's in for France. There's Reyes. So good minutes from Reyes. And they hit the cutter back outside. Rudy Fernandez, he's open, but Miritic comes in and puts it up. And the ball, he looks over at the ref for a foul. Adil collects the ball. And Rodriguez fouls Parker. So Sergio Scariolo, Sergio Scariolo wants a timeout. But De Colo inbounds it to Parker. Spain have got to dig deep and get some stops. France, meanwhile, they might be able to throw in a dagger or two. Two on the shot clock. Tony Parker puts up a tough one. And Rudy with the rebound. Yule is able to get it to Gasol. He's going to go to work on Gobert. And goes up under and draws the foul, and that's foul number four. But that is just a footwork clinic there by Bao Gasol. You see him backing in Gobert. Excuse me, the foul middle. number three on Gobert. Look at that one more time, the fake. Such long arms, the step through, it is so powerful there. Bao Gasol, two meters, 13. Even for Rudy Gobert, it is difficult to cover him. And he's got enormous reach. So back to an eight-point deficit. Pablo Aguilar and Guillem Vives, those players on the Spain bench just watching tonight. Scariolo not going that deep. And the free throw is good, so back to seven points. Already above his uh, tournament average with 24 points, Pau Gasol. Dio makes the pass. Ten on the shot clock. And Rudy reaches up, knocks it, and it'll be seven seconds on the shot clock. Rudy thought it went off of Batum. He's shaking his head. Here it is again. Decolo goes hard to the basket, puts it up. And a good box out from Gasol, keeping Gobert away. Now Yule explodes down the floor. Fernandez back over to Yule. Yule for three. Rims out. And Gasol kept it alive, but Batum swooped in and got the ball. Now quickly to Gobert, and that's a charge. Pal Ribas had his feet set, and that is number four 
But that's a tough pass to Rudy Gobert, who's running full speed, and he's got somebody in front of him. Th that has to be recognized. Let's look at it one more time right here. If you Boris Dia, you got so much experience, you should know that Rudy Gobert is not set with his feet. And he probably does know it. So Gobert has to sit down. Lovern back into the game. They got to go to Paul Gasol in the post against Lovern. And a foul called on Lovern, pushing him away from the basket. And now that is four fouls. And two free throws there for Paul Gasol. And two free throws. So that is a big, a big call. But you have to go to that. Paul Gasol has been your bread and butter in the whole tournament. Now he's got 24 points and six rebounds. He's been the man on a mission. You have to find him. I thought that last time that you shot a three-pointer, Pau Gasol was really frustrated that he did not get a touch on that ball. So Gasol at the line. Makes the first one, just does get it in. Mirdic taking a breather. Reyes back in, has played well for Spain. How about that 15 free throws already shot by Pau? He's made 13. Makes that one as well. And now back to a five-point game. Spain just hangs in there. Four and a half minutes remaining. Foul trouble very definitely now hurting France. This is a big possession for them. Tony Parker looks for some space, and he's fouled by Rodriguez. But only team foul number three, so it's going to be out of bounds play there for France. Yep, with 14 on the shot clock. That's not a bad foul by Rodriguez. And he now we're going to have, uh, as you look at Rodriguez there, Flo Pietrus has come in for Louvain, and he's going to go up against Pau Gasol. That's an interesting substitution. Over to Nicolo for three, and misses that one. Pietrus kept it alive, but Rudy comes up with it. That's why it's going to be DR on Pau Gasol. And Rodriguez fouled as he gets close. As he starts to drive. The foul called on Batum. That's a, a tough, that's a tough break there for Nicola Batum. I thought he had a pretty good position. Let's see one more time. It was kind of a more of a reach in there by Tony Parker. Well, it looked, it looked like Batum with his right arm has his hand on Rodriguez, and maybe that's what the referee saw. That's first free throws there for Sergio Rodriguez in the game today. <laughs> Not easy to first free throws. And the Real Madrid player makes the first one. Some of the Spanish uh, wives, girlfriends. I think the biggest point in the game there, negatively there for France, is the fourth foul by Rudy Gobert. Yep, it's, it's gotten him out of the game. And Rudy, excuse me, Rodriguez makes it again. And now, George, it's a three-point game. It's getting to be white knuckle time, especially for these French fans. Parker gets close to the lane. Reyes cuts off his uh, penetration. Now Reyes on Parker, and Reyes commits the foul. So first foul on Reyes, and it's the fourth team foul, I think, on Spain. So the next next foul is going to be two free throws there for France. Tony Parker just drawing the contact there on the mismatch against Felipe Reyes in the open court. Now Reyes is playing in the middle of the zone that no, they're playing uh, a man, excuse me. Dio backs up Reyes. Nowhere to go, passes back to Parker. Two on the shot clock, it's gonna be rushed. It's gonna be contested, and Pau Gasol gets the rebound. Yule looks up the floor, gives it to Rudy. That was a smart decision by Rudy to stop the fast break, didn't take the three-pointer. They got to go to Gasol. Well, Gasol sets the pick, now he's gonna roll. He's going to stay out. No, he's going to put it on the deck. He's yeah. going in for the dog. Ah. And Powell ah. looks up at the heavens. The two-handed jam. And it's a one-point game. So Gasol now has to guard Gobert. Reyes is on Boris Dio. And Rodriguez is chasing Tony Parker. Batum for three. That's off. And 
They couldn't quite corral it. And then Gasol blocks Rudy Gobert for the third time tonight. What a crucial defensive play by Gasol. Spain now with a chance to take the lead. France have got to dig in and play some D. It's Gasol. He puts up a hook shot. Oh my and Spain God. have gone back in front. 62 to 61. He pulls out the old school. Uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar Skyhook. Are you kidding me? Paul Gasol's got it all. Could be Tony Parker time. Well, he gives it to Boris Dio. Batum puts up a tough shot. And Gasol bats it away, but a foul called on Felipe Reyes. And there's actually mouthpiece, the, 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 the mouth protector. Of somebody is oh, on the floor. It's Gobert's, but this was the last foul by Felipe Reyes. He just couldn't stay in front of Gobert. And here's the round hook by Pau Gasol. Look at the patience. There's nobody coming, and he's bringing down a shot that you don't see so often. But almost an unstoppable shot, really. Big free throws from Nicola Batum. Nine points for him. He'd been quiet for an awfully long time. Look at that. One of five from the floor. Just one of six from the arc and one of five inside the arc. But he makes both and puts France back in front. Big free throws there. What an incredible scene. And to be honest, I think we expected it, didn't we? we it did. was coming down close. Gasol again with Gobert. France looked to help out, possibly. And he has to put a little turn away, a turnaround jumper, and he looks over at the Spain bench and says, who's your daddy? Is there anybody in the world right now that can stop Paul Gasol? How high is his confidence? Well, Parker dribbling around up top, being chased by Rodriguez. Gobert sets the pick. Parker for three. Off the rim. Dicolo chases it down. Now Batum. It's only Spain by one. Batum. Fade away. Short. Gasol gets it into the hands of Reyes. And now, Cole says, we've got to pull it, get it done defensively, guys. They need a stop. Rodriguez gets inside, passes back out to Rudy Fernandez. Spain a little lost on this possession as Rudy Gasol challenges, but Rudy Gobert knocks it to Decolo. Final minute. And Spain just not able to go to Paul Gasol. And this time, Decolo called for the charge, and the hero, Felipe Reyes, but he was takes there. one for the team. His feet were set. I watched him. I mean, he just slid into that position perfectly. What a gutsy play there by Reyes. That's a veteran move right here. This is when you sacrifice the body for your team. Right his, on his chest. Unbelievable. And that's what the referee saw, and that's what he called. So, 46 seconds remaining. Spain up by one, beaten by this French team last year in the quarterfinals of the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Is this going to be payback for Spain? Guess all. Backs up Gobert. Goes up with a hook again. This time denied, but he gets the rebound, and he passes out to Yule. Eight seconds difference, or 12 seconds difference between shot clock and the game clock. Rodriguez gets a lane, puts it up, he scores! Spain had taken a three-point lead with 16.6 seconds remaining. And that's the biggest lead in the game for Spain. Nope, Batum gets it. Count it! Nicolo Batum to the rescue for France. Unbelievable scenes. Cool. Calm and collected. Watch out for some steals. Batum's got long arms. You have to play safe just to inbound the ball. They're going to have to get it to Rodriguez and let him try to penetrate, I would imagine. Nope, they're going to get it to Gasol immediately. He's going to wait. Nine on the shot, or nine on the game clock. Eight. Gasol gets into the lane, puts it up. He's swatted. Now France with a chance. And the ball goes out of bounds with 1.3 seconds remaining. That is an interesting situation. 1.3 seconds left. Let's see this drama. 
So Rodriguez in. Claver in. Spain do not want to commit a foul here. Who's on the floor for Spain? Nobody knows. Yeah, six players. I mean, they, they, okay. don't want, they don't want to have six players there. Claver has come back in. I'll tell you what, the way that Batum was able to catch and shoot, I wouldn't put it past him getting one off. But they've got several players, including Jellabal. This is a, it's going an to Batum. uncomfortable situation for Spain. It's going to go question. to Batum. Watch him. He's watching the ball. Look at that. He's going to go there. For the win! He puts it up! Oh, it was on line, but it was short. And with that, we go to overtime. Bonus time. Hey, more Extra. basketball for the money. You got to like it. Extra five minutes, and you got to be deflated here if you're Spain. 66-66. guys are tired. Spain will have possession. So this is what it all comes down to, folks. The winner gets to the final of the Eurobasket. The winner qualifies for the Olympics. Rodriguez gets inside, puts it up and in off the glass. He just takes it directly at Tony Parker. What a great play by Sergio Rodriguez to open up the overtime. Now Decolo and Parker. Batum goes to his left and the ball kicked. So 14 on the shot clock. And look at the second leading score for Spain. Sergio Rodriguez is up to 15 points. This was pretty risky pass here by Batum, but Sergio Rodriguez really came to play today. And really, you know, there have been questions about that Spanish backcourt in this Eurobasket, but maybe they were just saving it up for, for crunch time here at the end. Parker gets in the lane, hands it off the deal, and he puts it up, a little reverse layup. That was good execution and patience by the French. They did not get under pressure. Good pass by Parker to deal. Again, it's Rudy, or excuse me, it's Rodriguez. He goes in this time. Rust up the shot. Interesting strategy. He took a chance on that drive because it was against three French defenders. Now Tony Parker looks for space. Puts it up at the line. Good. Now France in front. He got better of Rodriguez on that situation. Coming off the pick, curling to the paint, able to do the step through jumper. Gasol battling for position with Gobert. 10 on the shot clock. Serhiel Yule. He's going to put one up. I can feel it. Here he goes. He gets it up off the glass. And I was surprised that they did not work the ball. It was a great shot by Yule after the take. But how comes that Paul Gasol just, it was a great deny by Gobert, but he doesn't get a touch on the ball. And a foul committed by Felipe Reyes. Try to trap Parker. Uh, it was just a half a step too late. I mean, if you close the penetration, then you have a chance. It was the Sergio Yui on the strong drive to the basket. And Gobert was so occupied with Paul Gasol. You see him just coming in there. there. There was nobody to block the shot. Oh, Parker's short. He's missed a couple tonight. Ten points. One for three from the line. Six assists. One from three at the line, yep. And the second one is no good as well. Just didn't have the legs in it. Now Rodriguez. So, Spain dodge a bullet here to get it right back. Rudy bumped by Decolo. Colo says, I didn't do anything. What was he saying? He was made a, made a collision there with uh, Powell. And nervous time there for Cole. So Rudy Fernandez, having made his uh, two free throws tonight, goes to the line and makes the first. Free throw shooting 91% from Spain for Spain. 
was such a big part of the game, isn't it? What is it for France? It's 70. 70, 7 of 10. So it had been really good until those two misses. And Rudy makes both and puts Spain back in front. But the greatest difference in the line is 24 free throws taken by Spain and only 10 by France. Dior looks to pass. Got to get it to Batum now. And a foul called on Reyes. So now Batum will go to the line. And you have to go out. Felipe Reyes just switched out of Batum. So the same situation didn't happen like at the end of the regulation. You see right here, not much contact no, there. Just had his hand on him. But you know what? They have been calling some hand checking. So Batum having hit the game time three pointer from the left corner. He's got 12 points. And makes both free throws. So we've, we're all tied up again. Gobert contesting with Gasol. Eight on the shot clock. Gasol goes up, misses. And good defense from Gobert, but then Rudy reaches in, almost gets it back, and here comes Tony Parker. DiColo, he puts it up. Oh, oh! Ah! What a play! Spain almost knocked the ball away, but Rudy Gobert went up and grabbed it and dunked it. That was an alley-oop at the very last second of that fast break. I wasn't even expecting it this time. Gasol has found it difficult going to the basket the last two times. Holds his ground, misses again. Rudy gets it. And suddenly, Gasol doesn't look like the best option for Spain. Yule with five on the shot clock. Penetrates, puts up a jumper. And Gasol keeps it alive. And the scrap for the ball, it goes out of bounds. A foul has been called on Pau Gasol. Pau just got his double-double with 32 points and 10 rebounds. But he loses a key battle there on the boards. And how about Batum just firing up the crowd? Everybody is standing on their feet here in Lille. Look at the last replay. Pau Gasol almost had it tipped in. Philippe Perez also fights for the rebound. One more time here. You know, Gasol really the last three or four attempts at the basket has just not been able to, to finish. Just tired. And that French D as well. And Boris Dial misses, so some free throw misses here, helping Spain. And look at these French fans. How about Rudy Gobert just playing some smart defense? He, he's got four fouls, but he's been able to stay aggressive in the paint and, and really bother Pau Gasol. From out, a three-point advantage for France. He makes one of two. Le Bleu trying to play the D again. Gasol rolls, gets inside, draws the foul, and that's Gobert's last. He has fouled out of the game. And let's see what happens now, because Geoffrey Loren is going to have to come back to the game. Eight points and 13 rebounds today in the office for Rudy Gobert. He doesn't agree with the call, but I do not agree on the replay. You saw it, Pau Gasol, smart play. He initiated the contact of the dribble. I'll tell you what, there are a lot of twists in the tail still here, George. 114 remaining. Gasol. And again, the free throws now. He's 15 of 17. Ninety-two percent at the line today for Spain as a team. And those are the types of things you have to do to win big games. Well, incredible. We thought last night was good. Lithuania and Italy. <laughs> now we've got the host nation going down to the wire with Spain in overtime. Batum. Bounce pass to Lover and he fumbles it away. He couldn't catch it. Now Yule. 
Back to Gasol, oh, and he dunks it again! And Spain back in front! I'll tell you, it was a well-conceived play with ba Batum and Lovern. They just didn't pull it off. Yeah, I mean, I thought that Batum just really made a difficult pass there for Lovern, but to give a lot of credit to you, just pushing it down the floor and making a drop pass to Gasol. Tony Parker now, he puts up a jumper, he gets it blocked by Rooney! Unbelievable how the game is turned in Tony Parker. 11 seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock again. Just when it seemed France had Spain right where they wanted him, Yule drives in. Rodriguez from the corner. Pau Gasol for the follow! And Spain have gone back in front! 78-75! Parker gets it to Batum, who again is going to look. He puts it up. And is he going to get three free throws? Yes, he is! And this is the danger that you face when you foul, when you try to foul the three-point shooter. But why did not Claver foul him after he received the ball? Please explain that to me. He allowed him to take the dribble. Look at that one more time. Right here, this should have been a foul. No, don't wait. Unbelievable. So Batum goes to the line. He's already saved France once at the end of regulation. And Batum now misses the first. And almost bails Claver out, doesn't he? <laughs> kind of does. Six for seven, the first miss there for Batum. Well, it's not over for France. If he makes two, they can foul. And he misses the first two. And really... No, he has to make one. He needs to make this one. And you need to crash the boards as well. He looks at the coach. He says, do you want me to make it? Or do you want me, want me to miss it? Spain right now definitely with the advantage. He misses it intentionally. And Spain get the rebound quickly up to Rudy. Over to Yule. And it's not looking good for France now. Spain closing in on one of their all-time famous victories. It goes to Gasol. And revenge is sweet one year later. Having had their FIBA Basketball World Cup spoiled by this French team, Spain have come out and shocked the world. They have beaten the host nation France in Lille. What a shocker for the host nation to lose the semifinal and hats off to Spain. They have done everything just perfect. They have executed. They have stayed in the game and they have bounced back from an incredible ending of the regulation in 40 overtime. 40 points for Pau Gasol. Spain win it 80-75. to They're in the final and they have also qualified for the Olympics.